The Children's Hospital at Westmead is one of Australia's most loved institutions. Their research program at the Kids Research Institute is motivated by the needs of sick children who come here to the hospital every day. Over the years, they've made some remarkable breakthroughs. Breakthroughs that save our children's lives. Breakthroughs that help children and their families lead normal, happy lives. It's the generous donations from all Australians from all walks of life that keep the programs running every day. So let's hear from some of the researchers and their patients and some of their remarkable stories. Here at the Children's Hospital I run a research laboratory where we look at the causes of muscular dystrophy, we discover genes, we look at the mechanisms for the disease and we try to develop uh, improved therapies. So the Grace Centre is a newborn intensive care unit based at the Children's Hospital at Westmead and uh, we look after some of the sickest babies in the state of New South Wales. Well I'm a, a physician and, and a researcher uh, here at the Children's Hospital and my interest is in a, an area of research called gene therapy. So the cancer um, unit of the Children's Hospital here at Westmead is the largest cancer treatment unit in New South Wales and over the last 30 years the unit's seen um, about 3,000 patients come through. We look after babies who have a variety of complex conditions. Uh, about 30 to 40 percent of the babies who come to us have a heart condition and many of these will require heart surgery it can be open heart surgery and really that's quite amazing when you consider the size of a baby's heart, it's about the size of an olive. Neuromuscular diseases as a group people might consider rare, they affect one in a thousand people um, but the cost to the patient and their families and the cost of, to the community is huge. In actual fact neuromuscular disorders um, have a, a higher cost to the community than any other national health priority. About one in every 30 newborn babies would have um, a problem that has some sort of genetic basis and the particular area I'm interested in it would be about one in every 2,500 babies. It costs for muscular dystrophy alone uh, $127,000 per patient per year to look after all their medical costs. Every year in Australia over 700 children are diagnosed in, with cancer and in New South Wales that's over 200 children are diagnosed with cancer. The good news is that the survival rate for children with cancer has improved from as low as 20% in the 1960s to greater than 80% today. In the past the survival rate in the Grace Centre was 83% so that meant that 17% or nearly one in every five babies died but for the last two years our survival now has increased dramatically it's over 97 percent and we think that the reason that these our survival has improved so much is the fact that we use research and we also try to improve the care we look all around the world to see what's the best available evidence and because there's so much focus on research in the hospital then we are mindful that we can always look for ways to improve the care that we provide. So the first condition to be successfully treated by gene therapy is an immune deficiency disorder that affects uh, infants called severe combined immune deficiency and that's been successfully cured by taking bone marrow cells out of the the child's hip and there's now around 20 children globally who've been successfully cured using that technology. In my group the thing that we're particularly focused on is a process known as metastasis and unfortunately this is a chief cause of death from cancer and so my research group what we're trying to understand is how the cells are able to spread around the body so if we can stop the cells from spreading that means that we can stop the patients from dying. Obviously parents ask us when they come they say well is my baby going to survive and increasingly we can say yes that's extremely likely and but then the next question very soon after is well is my child going to have a normal life obviously we want to be sure that they're going to be able to run play with other children that they're going to go to school normal school and participate and do well at school and also we hope that they will then have a fruitful life all the things that we all hope for for our own children so we're moving into times where we're not just slowing down the disease, but we're actually moving towards a cure.
the the benefits that we have seen in Adam. He's, I mean, he's 11 and a half, and he's still able to get around, still quite mobile, and is able to be part of everyday life. He's going to mainstream schooling, and just the support that we get the whole way through from the, 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 the hospital, the whole package, you don't have to go anywhere else to be able to, to maintain a, a relatively normal lifestyle. And it's really become part of our clinic visit now is after you've checked out how the kid is going and developed what therapy that uh, what sort of therapies or interventions they need the parents will always sit back and say so how's the research going doc what's happening and I firmly believe now that for muscular dystrophies um, and I say this to, to families is that I believe that we'll have a cure for muscular dystrophy in my lifetime and then they look at me and say and how old are you? <laughs> I first met him when he was about 18 months old and he still hadn't walked yet because his leg had broken when he was first got up as a toddler because he had this condition called congenital pseudarthrosis which he got from his NF1. That's what you've got, isn't it? NF1? Yeah. Do you know how to say the big word of NF1? Neuroflamatosis. That was well done. I'm not sure if we experimented on the mice first or on Joel first but uh, we had some ideas from our experiments that we'd been doing and we we gave you some new treatments, both a special protein to make the bone grow and also another drug to stop the bone going away again. And lo and behold, the whole thing healed up. With the research mind that's made Joel's legs all well, he, we don't take the wheelchair anymore. It's fantastic just to get in the car and go out like a normal family, not worrying about wheelchair, not worrying about stairs. Your leg's been healed now and you can run around everywhere? Yeah. What sports do you like? Tenpin bowling and swimming. Uh huh. You any good at tenpin bowling? Yeah, I've got in a few strikes. A few strikes. Many other children like Joel, we haven't been quite so successful, even though we've got new treatments that work better than the old treatments from our research. There's still lots of research to do, and some of the other kids are still running around on legs that are half healed or still need a lot of support. Um, and the occasional kid still has to have their leg amputated, but you didn't have to have yours amputated, did you? No. Not yet, anyway. No. We could do an amputation here, do you think? <laughs> We are so thankful that he's up and running around as a normal 10-year-old boy does. We owe everything to this place and we would just appreciate as people giving as much money to the research because if it wasn't for the research, my little boy wouldn't have his leg. So please give as much as you can to research for the Children's Hospital at Westmead. The majority of research at the Kids Research Institute involves clinicians interacting one-on-one -on -one with children. Our researchers are involved in all levels of research, from basic science research in the laboratory to clinical trials and population health research. We like to say we turn today's research into tomorrow's medicine, but the happy reality is we turn research into happy, healthy kids. With your support, we can help many more children lead happy, normal and fulfilling lives. Thank you for your support. Look, the best thing about our jobs is that we can rise above ourselves. You know, you're just an ordinary person. You know, you have a family. You know, you're sending off your kids to school, trying to worry about the washing up and the laundry. You come to work here and suddenly you're doing something that seems extraordinary. It is. You're being allowed into people's lives at the most vulnerable time to look after the most precious person, their baby. They trust you to do that, to do the best that you can, and it really makes you better than you are.